All right, so my presentation is about the ISO 31000 standard on uh, risk management. I don't know if you guys have ever heard about this. In, you guys have all heard about it, read something about it. So I'm going to try and make it very simple. Just go through the, the key concepts of this uh, standard and what you should focus on to achieve excellence in, in risk management. So uh, the agenda for today is just to do a little bit of an intro on ISO for those who haven't never heard about it. Um, we'll do a little simple comparison risk assessment, what, what we all do very well, and compare to what, what, what we call a risk optimization, using the ISO 31000 standard as a framework. And then I'll go into some details that the five attributes of excellence um, in the, defined in the ISO 31000 standard. We'll go into detail in, um, into each of those. And then I'll, I'll summarize. Okay, so the, the history of the ISO 31000 standard is actually very simple. It comes from was really the newly ratified Australia-New Zealand 4360 standard. Now, this standard was born uh, mostly in Australia, New Zealand. Um, a, 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 bunch of a bunch of mining and resources uh, companies came together and defined the standard for, for risk management. Now, it was they approached the, the Australia-New Zealand standard, uh, sorry, the, the ISO group in 2004. And they brought their standard to the ISO group for, for review. So they wanted to create a, an international standard from this very, from the successes that they've had over the years since 2004, since 2002 when they started. <laughs> and uh, in 2005, the ISO set up a working group to review um, this Australia New Zealand standard and also all the other standards that were um, being submitted at the time and to create a um, to harmonize all of these standards and create one single standard for, for a global standard. Now, finally, in, in October, the standard is, is going to be released. So it's going to become the, the next international standard. Um, it, it's the first standard for, well, the first international standard for risk management. Right, so I want to do a quick comparison between the way risk management has evolved outside of uh, the North American or North and South American markets. Um, where I was schooled in South Africa, risk management is something that is mandated by the government. And this is similar in, in Australia. The, the, the board members are ultimately responsible for all risks. So, so the process or the, or the process of risk management um, and, and the, the assessment that's done, if any of those risks occur and those assessments were done, board members or, or senior management will be held accountable for those risks if they were significant risks. Now, this is a, a distinct, distinct difference uh, in this marketplace. Over here, we do, we do risk assessment very well. We've been doing it for years. So we always try to determine the value of risk or the value um, that, that is at risk. And, and we've got all sorts of different models in, in this market. We've got risk models, and we do a lot of survey and, and, and assessments, and we send it out to multiple people, and we try to normalize all of these different types of risks and we do a lot of uh, risk assessment. We separate our risk types. We ask a number, group of people to analyze that. And, and really what happens is we come, we get values. We get a, a whole bunch of values. And we've got a number of spreadsheets. And, and we have all sorts of different types of determining this risk value. But do we really know our risk profile? Do we really understand how, how much value is at risk? Do we ever really know? This is really the question now. Um, sorry, just to go one slide back. The process of risk assessment alone determines, tries to determine the value of risk, right, and the values. What the ISO standard proposes is that you use risk management and the process of managing, determining the value of risk, but also managing that risk, so defining action items, monitoring that regularly, basically creating a culture of risk management that adds value to the organization. And the real key issue, the real key principle here, and I'll, I'll um, describe this graph in just a second, but the key thing to take away from here is that the process is supposed to define positive consequences of risk as well as negative consequences and actioning those, adding value to, organi to your organization. So this diagram really defines the, the bow tie risk assessment method. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, ever heard of that. Now, I, I can just draw it here with my finger. The bow tie, really, the, the center of the bow tie is the actual risk event that may occur. So the uncertainty that you have yeah, you know, in your operations, as an example. 
on the left hand side, so the, the triangle on the left, are all the causes or the, you know, the potential threats that may lead to the risk event occurring. And on the right hand side, we have consequences of this event. So those may be both negative and positive. So one of the big differences between just traditional risk assessment and this new approach that I'm going to talk about is that we don't only think about risk as something negative and something that will have some loss associated to it, but that we try and think about something that will create value, add benefits to our company, exploit opportunity, some advantages, something that in that, in that event that you've analyzed, something that you could exploit, you know, sorry, um, to add value to your organization. Right, and then the, the shirt part or the button part of the, the bow tie is really the treatment. What are we going to do to make sure that each of these causes do not occur? Or what can we do to prevent it from ever occurring? And uh, for the same token, what do we have in place to both um, exploit opportunity. So what processes do we have in place to identify and exploit opportunity? And what have we got in place to mitigate losses and reduce or reduce losses? Okay. And then I added assurance to this diagram because we have to bring in, we have to provide assurance that these treatment plans that we defined and the risk mitigation strategies that we have in place and all of our controls are in fact operating effectively because this is something that management will identify and they will document for you. You need a layer of assurance to, to, um, to provide assurance that this is actually happening. So how do we mature risk management now um, in this marketplace from traditional assessment methods to this culture change of management where people are involved in the risk management process throughout the organization. So instead of having a central team doing all of the work, doing all of the assessments, consolidating everything, how do we get to a place where people see risk as a positive thing, they want to participate? Because as we all know, a lot of people complain that these risk assessment methods do nothing for them. They have to fill out all these surveys and the assurance team comes along and the SOX team comes along and the enterprise risk management comes along. Everybody sort of asks the same questions, but it's 10 different uh, spreadsheets. So they don't want to do it. How do we get them to do it? Now, really the bridge, we believe, the bridge that will lead you to effective risk management is the ISO 31000 standard. Now, at the beginning I said there's, there's five principles or, or pillars of success in the ISO 31000 standard that, that, that we promote, uh, our company promotes. And that's got nothing to do with, uh, it's got nothing to do with the software company that I work for. It's, it's, it's the, the principles that will ma make risk management work in your organization. So think of it as the pillars in this bridge. Now, I'm going to talk about this maturity curve here because this is really, um, this is really what, what we are trying to avoid. You'll see there's four stages in the life cycle of, of risk management. The very first stage is the silo approach to risk management. Now, this approach is what we've, we're very familiar with. Uh, there's risks in SOCs, um, financial controls, there's risk ma health and safety risk management, we've got corporate social responsibility, we have our operations risks, we have our, um, you know, I can think of a, a whole number, every, or every organization have their own set of silos. Now, typically, the, the risk management that we do here is very good because those silos, the objective of the silos is to work well. So management typically identify risks.